Shamanism. Now, shamanism is not a native word. Shamanism basically comes from the, the East, meaning basically the same thing, a medicine man, a healer. But many different cultures and clans and tribes have different names for things. So I took that class first, beginning to learn about many of these things, the authenticness of these things. Then I eventually have taken other classes and studied with him. I wanted people to know and un begin to understand and have an open mind to what's available to us. But many times when I would start talking or people would ask me questions, I could see that, oh, they're not really open to this. They, they're <laughs> like, uh, what's this? Is this something, you know? Focus, focus. So, yes, so kind of some hocus pocus are like, oh, you don't want to get, I had one friend that said, you don't want to get into any of that. I'm like, I want to learn, you know, learning, learning, we learn, doesn't mean we believe everything we read, but if we don't know it, how can we dismiss it? So, in, in the study and these things that I will demonstrate to you, um, I incorporated these things into my most recent book, which is called Dancing in Spider's Web. And this book is the story of two women. They're they're more they're they're our age. They're older. I mean, they've come through the you know, they're at a point in their life that there were some things in their past that they had buried and pushed down and didn't want to face, and they needed to heal, but they were never open to it. And this story tells the journey of these two women and their path that came from this area, in the Appalachian area, in the Kentucky, uh, Northeast Tennessee, uh, Southeast, you know, our Appalachian area, because I mentioned some areas there that I have used in, in, in prior books that I've written. And their journey took them to New Mexico, and I have been to New Mexico studying and learning there too. So this was what Elizabeth asked me and if I would share some things with you. And the first thing I will say in the, in our movies, when you see the Cowboys and Indians movies, and when they're, you know, they're getting ready to attack and you always hear the drums beating, you know, they're like, oh, they're getting ready, the drums are beating. And what you usually hear in the movies is something like, That's not the way it was really done. That was not the way it was really done at all. This is an authentic uh, drum that I made. It's made out of elk hide and it has the raw hide. And I did make it. I took a class and I did make it. And it is made in the authentic way. And my beater is the same. And what's inside the beater, there's tobacco in here and it's wrapped in raw hide before it has the cover on it. Because tobacco was, when you went into a native village or town or whichever part of the country you would be in and you here you come riding in on your horses and you wanted to come in and you're you're met with them to be politically correct as we say you present them with a twist of tobacco that is your gift to the the head man who we named chief that's not what they used to call themselves but white man started calling them chief if he accepts it you're welcome in the village and you are protected the entire time that you're there no one can harm you they will feed you and shelter you they will talk with they will listen they will have a, a, a talking session and they will listen to you you know until you, you leave but so that's why tobacco is also put in the beater on this. There's many, usually in, in a ceremony, there would be a large drum, maybe 36 inches circumference, 
that many players, if you've never been to a, a powwow, if you have, you probably will see have seen one. But they will sit around, and the beat is just steady. They all are beating and steady. Also, because they all wanted to learn from nature and incorporate nature, do you know that the uh, woodpecker is representative of the drum beat? Because when that woodpecker beats, it sounds like a drum. Yeah. When you listen to it, it does sound like a drum. And what he is telling you when you hear a woodpecker, and if you stop and pay attention, is that he is giving you a, he's playing a rhythm to tell you that maybe you need to pay attention to the rhythm in your life. Or before you have a talking circle. And when I mention, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking in terms a little bit more of the, the Southwestern and Northwestern tribes during the, the days of the fur trappers and when we were beginning to expand and invade basically those areas and they would come in. Uh, before they would actually meet with you for any serious discussion, you had to be smudged. Do you know what smudging is? It's not taking the soot and putting it on your face like we do at Halloween to dress up. They smudge you, and this is a special shell that we use when we're smudging. And I have put in here some sage, some cedar, and sometimes I would clip off a piece of sweet grass. You could use all of them or either one. This is a sage bundle like they use in New Mexico because that's where they grow the sage. So they wrap it in these bundles with some pine. And I got this one a year or so ago. Of course, it's shedding a lot, but this is the way they prepare their smudge bundles out there. You can also find smaller ones in gift shops sometimes that are smudged like that. But I do have permission to demonstrate this. Do I have a, uh, anyone that would like to be smudged? <laughs> Volunteer. If not, I'm going to pick on somebody that I right, don't know. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Do him. You'll, you'll yes, he'll do it. He'll, he'll be smudged. All right. Way to go, John. David, you have to stand up. <laughs> you have to stand up. You have to stand up. Well, good. Listen, we're going to cleanse you. And I have three That's what you want. <laughs> I don't live through this. That lady's name was Sally Gardner. Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed the See, shell has the holes in the side. It has holes in the side to let some of the smoke. The first thing we would do to smudge you is you can put your hand there, put up one foot. Up here. Yeah, like on that. the back, on the bottom. I need, it, and I would, I would wave smoke over the bottom of the foot and the other one. Okay, okay that's that's <laughs> that's to you've been walking in the earth, and that is that's to clean yourself. Telling us how old you are too, John. Right. <laughs> <laughs> As to whether he can balance himself and stand on one leg or not. Then I would begin down here, and I use the feathers to come up the front of you, and I'm whisking the smoke over you and then over your head and I turn around. Then I will come back down the back side of him. This is cleansing. Uh, this is called smudging. And what I've done now is that all the imbalance and impurities in him I have thrown into the ground. It's gone. You're cleansed. You can sit down. <laughs> Sometimes if people don't have somebody to actually do it for them, they would like to smoke and then they would take it and do like this. Well, most all tribes today, you can go anywhere and you'll see dream catchers for sale everywhere because it makes money, it's commercial. But the dream catchers, this is a dream catcher that was handmade for me, which is not at all like the ones you see that you buy, which are perfectly round and everything. Okay, they made them out of twigs originally. The tribe that we now call the Chippewa up north, that's where the dream catchers originated. Centuries ago, long before the white man was here. 
and it originated because when a baby was born and they put them in the the holder, which whatever they wanted to put the baby in, many times they would the grandmother would take sinew and make like a spider web over top of the baby's face yeah. to keep flies and bugs from falling yeah. on the baby yeah. that couldn't yet smack it away. Then as the child grew and was a little bit older, then they would make, you know, a smaller one, you know, to put near the child where it went and slid, when it slept. And, and like most grandmothers, we you know, we tell stories to little children. And within that story is, is something for them to learn or something about faith and belief. So the story in with the Chippewa evolved about, you know, you keep this near because the net will keep out the bad dreams. So this this is the, the medicine wheel. And you see some of them some places in the country on mountains where there are stones that outline the medicine wheel. And the medicine wheel, again, is not something perfectly slender that you can buy in many gift shops. The medicine wheel indicates it's the circle, it's the circle of life. And there are many sacred numbers to the tribes and the Cherokee especially, which is what I was most interested in because that's my ancestry. Um, it means the four directions, north, south, east, and west. And it means the four elements, and the elements being the things that we need for life. We need air and we need the sun, we need the earth, and we need water, and those things that we need in, in life. To the native, most, and the southwestern tribes that roamed and traveled a lot for, um, to, to hunt the buffalo. In our movies, in our culture, we say they lived in a teepee. That was they didn't call it a teepee. That's a white man's term. It was a lodge. That's what they thought. It was the lodge. That's what they put up and took down with them. But all their lodges, and even here in the Cherokee, the opening to their house faced east. Life begins in the east with the rising sun. And in the east part of the medicine wheel, from the east to the south is your childhood. And that would be from the years from birth until maybe 20 so roughly but that's your childhood until you're going into ad adolescence and you go into adolescence in the south then in the south you began to grow toward maturity so you will go toward the west so when you get to the west which would be maybe about age 50 then you're considered more mature and you've learned things you've learned some life lessons and then you have more experience and more knowledge to share with others. Then you progress from the west up to the north, from maybe the age 50, 51, until around 80, 81 in the north. By the north, you are wise, or you should be. <laughs> well, some people never get out of the east. <laughs> well, that, that is true. I think I'm still in the that east. <laughs> and you get, you know, so you get to the north, and then, once you're to the north, you are a very honored, wise elder. And all the native tribes took care of their elder people. Uh, even as they were very old and sick, they still provided for them and took care of them. They didn't send them out anywhere, they took care of them. 